Tesla is back at it again, squeezing short sellers out of short positions in what could end up a massive short squeeze. Of course, it's coming. There's been nonstop good news that Wall Street refused to price in for a very long time. And that harsh reality for shorts is finally starting to set in. They were wrong about Tesla. And furthermore, good news coming out today, pushing that narrative onto the shorts. So why is Tesla stock up 4% today? How are hedge funds positioning their portfolios for Tesla specifically over the next couple of weeks and months? Let me tell you right now, it's very bullish. What's this new note out from Morgan Stanley that is screaming from the rooftops this bull market is about to end because corporate profits are disintegrating? How is this specific note from Morgan Stanley actually positive for Tesla? Get that. Super positive for Tesla. Could be a reason why the stock's up 4%. We'll talk about it here in this video. As well as how are the short sellers sitting? Short seller losses in this market have now hit over $120 billion. Over 10% of those losses are with Tesla stock alone. Just to show you the degree that short sellers are losing their asses. So the first bit of good news today, which is certainly not the best news, is that Rivian has now capitulated alongside GM and Ford and are no longer going to compete with Tesla to build a charging network. Yes, they have now joined Tesla. And this is a positive for Rivian, it's a positive for Ford and GM, but in the long term, this really solidifies Tesla as the sole competitor with EV charging. And over the long term, this highly profitable segment of Tesla's business will continue to grow larger and larger and get even more subsidies from the United States government. And who doesn't like subsidies and tax credits? The second bit of good news for Tesla today is the fact that a Cybertruck was tested in New Zealand for some of its final winter testing before deliveries start to kick off and mass production becomes underway. This is a positive sign because Cybertruck is guaranteed to be a success for Tesla. After all, they have more pre-orders for Cybertrucks than all of the deliveries they made for any Tesla model in 2022. They have one and a half million pre-orders for the Cybertruck that are just waiting to be fulfilled on. But what the Cybertruck is going to do for Tesla runs a lot deeper than 1.5 million pre-orders. It's going to drive massive attention to Tesla. It's going to be some of the best free advertising that you could ever have for Tesla. In fact, the last time Tesla re released a major model was in 2020, and that was the Model Y. And what happened one year later, deliveries increased almost 85% for Tesla. Odds are that happens again. The best part about being a Tesla investor, in context to what I just said, is markets are only expecting 27% volume growth for 2024. If this history plays out the same, and Tesla does grow deliveries by 80%, as what happened with the Model Y in 2020, well, the markets have a lot of catching up to do in pricing and future delivery growth, which we're not expecting much of as of right now. Now, in a new note put out to clients, Morgan Stanley says the stock rally is facing a bearish cocktail as falling inflation eats into profits and the Fed snaps $1.2 trillion in liquidity out of the market. Now, this is a very interesting take because inflation was a big driver to corporate profits over the last year and a half especially to a lot of your staple companies think a toilet paper company right people needed to buy toilet paper they could raise the prices all they wanted and people would pay them well how this is a positive for tesla is autos have actually been falling in price already so they're not nearly to the same degree going to have that pressure to cut prices further. Tesla has already cut prices about 25%. And Tesla has already seen 
the, the deflationary effect to their earnings. They've already had less profits. We seen that last quarter due to price cuts. So as the broad markets and many other stocks are seeing less profits due to cutting prices, Tesla has already done that. So they're ahead of the markets essentially in cutting prices or at least maybe not raising prices and seeing that earnings growth in which markets have gotten so used to. So it looks like long story short to simplify this, Tesla has already seen the negative effect to their earnings. It looks like an upward trajectory from here, whereas the broad markets, they might need to see their earnings estimates coming down. Tesla is ahead of the curve yet again. Now, what is going to happen today and after hours could be big for our markets. And that is going to be FedEx earnings. FedEx will report earnings here and after hours. FedEx is like a bellwether company for our markets. If FedEx earnings are good, that's going to show consumers are spending money. The economy is doing well. If FedEx earnings are bad and people are not spending as much money, then we might have a problem on our hands coming tomorrow. I think Tesla is semi-insulated from this just due to the fact of what we just said. They've been cutting prices. They're having really good demand as well as other automakers. Doesn't look like FedEx will affect Tesla too much, but it's always something to keep on your radar. Something else to keep on your radar is the fact that this market rally has caused shorts to lose $120 billion. Over 10% of that loss has been in one stock. Guess what stock it is? Tesla stock. This is probably a reason why Tesla continues to go higher. Under allocation, the market's having just too low expectations for Tesla to start off this year, as well as many other factors leading to Tesla going higher. And likely much higher from here if this short squeeze does actually play out the way that I expect it to play out. But one of the things I like to look at the most, this is one of my favorite things, the option activity from hedge funds and institutional investors. If future options look bullish, the stock tends to move that direction. Hedge funds tend to have more information than retail investors. That's why it can be so important to look at the option flow. Now, Tesla's option flow is stellar. Today, you have seen 1,400 orders for Tesla worth almost $500 million. Huge dollar amount flowing into Tesla options today. A positive order value of 71%. But if you take a look at some of these actual expirations, there you have a $290 call expiring this Friday for $150,000. You have multiple orders in the short term that are targeting 280, 285, 290, 300 by the end of this week and the end of next week. Also, a lot of orders for July 21st, like this 320 call. Purchase for $70,000. Uh, a 385 dollar call. $385 call. That is almost all-time highs. That is $115 from where the stock currently is. For August 18th. Another $100,000 trade. A bunch of these $300 calls that came in today... For June 30th, 10 days from now, the $300 calls. You got one, two, three, four, four of those orders right here. And more continuing. I mean, the flow is massively bullish. And these options are not cheap. It's not cheap, right? So the break evens on a lot of these options are substantially higher than even the strikes. So that leads me to believe Tesla's probably going to continue a lot higher from here. At least if hedge funds are betting massive amounts of capital on big short-term increases, that tells you something. 
But what is the big catalyst coming that could send Tesla into a dramatic short squeeze? Because that's essentially what hedge funds are betting on. That big catalyst is coming on July 2nd. And that is your Q2 delivery numbers. You're expecting another blowout quarter year over year. By far a new record for Q2 deliveries. We're expecting those numbers to come in at about 440,000 vehicles. But as we have seen from the data coming out of China last week, on one day, Tesla delivered 10,000 EVs in China in a single day. Odds are Tesla's going to, going to beat that 440,000 vehicle number. And odds are that leads to good earnings. As we talked about in the last video, prices for components in batteries, cobalt, nickel, and lithium, have all dropped a lot from their highs. Some of them have dropped three times from their highs. They're down 60% or more from their all-time highs. So some of the margin story might actually start to look a little bit better for Tesla as, as well. If we can get some positive guidance potentially on July 2nd, but at the bare minimum, get a delivery beat, that is going to be huge for Tesla's share price. Again, think back to what I said earlier in this video and what I've said in multiple videos. The markets themselves do not have high expectations for Tesla. If Tesla beats on those expectations for Q2 deliveries, the stock will squeeze shorts out of short positions. And that's what it looks like hedge funds and institutions are betting on with Tesla. Think about this logically for a moment. Tesla stock is trading at $270 per share. The August 2022 high was around $315 per share. The S&P 500 is well above its August high, which is back down here. The NASDAQ, well, well past its August 2022 high. Not even in the same ballpark. Stocks such as Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, Google, Amazon, doesn't matter what big tech name it is, point any of them out and they are higher than their August 2022 levels. So why is Tesla not? In relation to all of the good news that we have seen, Tesla's complete dominance of their field and probably beats to delivery numbers and estimates and the fact that hedge funds, institutions, and analysts are going to have to raise price targets and their estimates. Why would Tesla stock not be at a comparable level to the broad markets? That does not make sense to me. There is still a lot of catching up to do. And that's a, been a big part of my bullish thesis and a reason why I think a short squeeze is likely to occur over the next couple of weeks. Now, Tesla usually does rally into July 2nd. And I think that's where you could expect to see somewhat of a short squeeze. And it wouldn't surprise me to see Tesla get to around 300 per share or as high as 315 per share before July 2nd. And then from there, if they do be estimates, that's where you could really see a short squeeze up to 350, 375, 380, or potentially breaking new all-time highs. Because I personally think deliveries are going to co come in in between 460,000 and 480,000, potentially as high as half a million. That's the capacity that Tesla has to actually produce vehicles. As of right now, they can produce about half a million vehicles per, per quarter, right? That's why their higher end guidance was 2 million vehicles to be delivered in 2023. These things look very good for current Tesla shareholders. They look very bad for the short sellers. And short seller losses are running rampant. If you take a look at the dollar amount that is currently sold short in Tesla stock, you are sitting at $23.27 billion, as I have highlighted right here. That is up 53% in the last three months. Short sellers lost over 25% so far in the month of June, not including today's 4% rally. So they're getting smacked around. And... It, 
just the simple fact, again, if they were so wrong in their estimates of what Tesla was, was going to do when they shorted this stock, if you're that wrong, then there is a huge chance that you get blown up on your short position. That's why it looks like to me a short squeeze is starting currently or about to kick into full steam ahead if this move higher where the s p is down half percent and tesla is up three and a half percent is not the start of a short squeeze just imagine what it's going to look like when shorts actually do start to cover because i can sit here and make a fundamental logical explanation and reason why people are buying tesla right now just outright buying and holding Tesla. People were wrong. The stock should have never fallen so much. The stock should be much higher if you compare it to other big tech names. The peg ratio, very low. The Cybertruck coming. The improved demand for autos we've seen with GM and Ford. And some of the stellar delivery data that we have gotten out of China are all fundamental reasons why tesla should be going higher now it's very hard to quantify if a short squeeze is actually starting to some degree it looks like it today but on the other hand it looks like it could be coming i think once you really get over 300 dollars per share is where things get quite squeezy for tesla and that's where you could pretty rapidly break 300 into new all-time highs. Now, we also have a big catalyst coming tomorrow that could help kick a short squeeze into full steam ahead. And that is going to be Fed Jerome Powell. If Fed Jerome Powell was not hawkish enough last Wednesday during his press conference, he is going to hawk down on our markets. This is likely a reason why the indexes are falling today in anticipation of any hawkishness from Fed Jerome Powell tomorrow. At 10 o'clock Eastern time in the morning, Fed Jerome Powell is going to be speaking. If Powell takes the same dovish stance as he did on Wednesday, stocks likely rally from here. And any remblance of a negative narr narrative for our markets likely starts to dissolve because we are at the final innings of the Fed tightening cycle. The economy looks like it's doing very well. Even data that we got today from building permits came in much stronger than expectations at 1.49 million. You were expecting 1.42 million. Housing starts came in at 21.7%. You were expecting negative 1.2%. Building permits came in at 5.2%. You were expecting 0.6%. And housing starts as a total came in over 200,000 more than we were expecting. So the economy looks fine. The Fed looks like they're almost done raising rates. If Fed Jerome Powell does not, quote unquote, Paul Volcker us coming tomorrow, and then subsequently Thursday, also at 10 o'clock in the morning, there's not going to be much of a negative catalyst here to push down Tesla heading into July 2nd. So that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you guys think about all of this information down below in the comment section. If you want to come trade with me live in real time, every time I make a trade, join a great trading community. Link down below in the description of this video. We have a news wire over there. We're going to have all kinds of different tools coming out like how to day trade using options with an account less than $25,000. A lot of strategies most people don't know about or have never heard of that have really helped me especially when I first started out trading as as well. So we're going to have a lot over the, over there. If you guys do want to come join, link down below in the description of this video. You guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.